Hey everybody, before we start formally covering pandas, I'd like to show some examples of what the library can do. So I've titled this video Pandas Examples. We're going to cover one to two examples from several of the major areas within pandas. Uh, the, the idea here is just to show what's possible uh, with minimal explanation and no actual coding. So by the end of the video, you should have a, a good general overview for a few of the things that uh, Pandas is uh, capable of doing. All right, so in our first example, we're just going to read in data from a CSV file. This just simply contains some data from the city of Chicago on their public bike usage. So this is a data frame object. Um, you know, there's rows and there's columns. So we're gonna be using this for some of the examples. So our first major thing after reading in data is Panda's ability to filter. So for instance, in this data frame, we see that um, this trip duration column has some number in it. And we're gonna select all the rows such that the trip duration is greater than 5,000. And I believe this is in seconds, the units. So these are all the rides that had more than 5,000 um, you know, seconds. So that's, uh, that's called filtering. So this is a single condition. So this is the single condition. We're just testing whether bikes or the trip duration column is greater than 5,000. All right, moving on. So we can do multiple conditions. So in this, um, in, in this block of code, we will get all of the rides such that the trip duration is greater than 5,000 and the rider had a gender of male. So this is, what, uh, this is how you do multiple conditions. So uh, if we verify this, uh, by the way, I, this head method here is simply printing out the first five rows of the response of the data frame. So you're not seeing all of the data and that's because we don't want to clog up our notebook. All right, so uh, we see here that uh, each row that's returned has a gender of male and a trip duration greater than 5,000. And we can verify that. This, uh, in this cell, we're simply doing an or condition. So either one has to be true. Either the row has to be greater than 5,000 as a trip duration or the gender uh, can be male. So either one of those must be true. So here we see uh, we have many more uh, results returned. You know, all of these are in fact males, but they, none of them actually have a uh, trip duration greater than 5,000. <clears throat> so that's a or condition. All right, so the next thing after filtering is it, uh, pandas can aggregate data. So I have a new data set here. This is a, a US University race data. So we have, I, I believe around nine columns <clears throat> and within each column, is just the percentage of that race. So for instance, um, this first column is the percentage of students, the undergraduate population that is white. This is the percentage of undergraduate population that is black for, for, the, for this school. Okay, so it's a, a fairly simple data set. So an aggregation is uh, defined as simply a function that returns a single value um, when given a, a uh, you know, sequence of values. So by default, pandas will, uh, it, it'll aggregate column wise. So it'll try to aggregate the columns. So there's, a, there's many uh, you know, common aggregation methods like sum, mean, median, max, min, um, and several more. So this operation right here, we will see the mean method will simply go one by one over the columns and it will return the mean of that column. So the mean undergraduate uh, student population that is white is 51%. Now pandas also has the ability to change the direction of the operation. So the default is to go up and down, to go vertically, but you can also go horizontally by uh, using this axis parameter. So this is how you change the direction of the operation. So now every row will get summed up um, in this uh, data frame and they all should sum up to one so assuming there's a 100% and the, uh, the data is valid. So this is just a rounding, uh, you know, a rounding issue here, but it looks like uh, this has happened properly. So it's just summing across here for every university. All right, so that is aggregation methods. There's also non-aggregating methods. So methods that do not 
you know, a return a single value. These are methods that typically uh, take in one value and output one value, or take in however many values and output the same number of values. So the round method is one of those. So every number in the data frame will get rounded here to two decimals. That's what this two is here for. Let's go ahead and call this. So the shape of the data frame does not change. There's the same number of rows and the same number of columns. And we simply rounded off the two decimals and makes the data actually quite a bit easier to read. Um, so, so that is a non-aggregating method as opposed to an aggregating method, which just returns one, uh, one single value. Um, all right, so um, the above aggregation up here, let's, take a, let's go back up here, this mean method, this aggregated over the entire data set. Now, uh, often we'll like to aggregate within groups. We'd like to break up the data set. We'd like to segment the data set into groups based on you know, the unique values in a particular column. So instead of you know, taking the mean of all of the uh, undergraduate white population, we might want to look at the mean per state. So that's what I mean when looking aggregating within groups. So I have a new uh, data set here. It's just some data on uh, insurance. So each row represents, you know, um, some person and their attributes. And then the very last column is, you know, the, the, the total charges uh, for that person. So this is uh, some health insurance. Um, so for instance, let's say we wanted to find, um, so our first, uh, I should back up a second. So um, the, one of the, one of, uh, a major method is called value counts, and this is able to uh, take a count of all the unique values in a, one particular column. So for instance, what this, is, what this is going to do is going to find the number of times that each region appears in the data set. So Southeast uh, appears 364 times, for instance, Southwest appears 325 times, and so forth. So um, that's an easy way to count the unique occurrences for uh, one particular column. But um, we can do um, you know, more interesting things. So we can group by a particular, one particular column and then uh, aggregate a different column. So say we wanted to take the mean of the charges, and that's what this is doing over here, but we wanted to do it by sex. We wanted to group by sex. So every unique value of sex will now have its own mean charges. So uh, this is how you do this in pandas. So instead of one value for charges, you know, the overall mean, we're getting the mean per, um, <clears throat> uh, per sex. So if whatever number of sexes there are, that will be the number of rows that are returned. Okay, let's see how you can do multiple aggregation functions. So instead of just taking the mean, you can uh, do multiple aggregation functions. So you can also uh, count the number of non-missing values. That's what this does, or, or take the variance. Um, why don't we just change this to the max so it's the same as below. So this takes the mean, count, and max of the charges for, uh, you know, for each uh, sex. Okay, um, you can also group by multiple columns. So in this case, we're grouping by sex and region. So each unique combination of sex and region will now form a group. And we saw above that there were uh, four regions. So there's uh, two sexes, so that should be eight uh, groups. And we can see here that uh, looks like, in fact, there are eight groups. And for each of those groups, they have a mean charge, um, a total count, and then a maximum charge. So that's how you would group um, by multiple columns. Now, um, this display might not be what you want. So instead, uh, Pandas offers you a pivot table uh, command, which will simply pivot the data. So this is the exact same data. I'm just taking uh, all the unique combinations of sex and region, and I'm going to take the mean of the charges. So if you notice, um, this pivot table is essentially the exact same as this group by method. It just um, has different, uh, you know, syntax, and the values are the exact same. So you can see here, female northeast twelve nine fifty three, and uh, you know, female northeast over here is also twelve nine fifty three. 
So pivot tables allow you to have a nicer display of your data to make comparisons. Group by is, uh, is also good, um, but uh, it just pivot table allows you to have a, a different display. Okay, one cool thing, so this is just a, a kind of a fun trick. You can actually apply styles to your data frame so you can highlight things and make things pop out. So if you wanna really uh, showcase you know, a particular value in your data frame, you can do that. So in this case, I've just highlighted the maximum value for each column. So you can see which you know, sex has the uh, highest charges for each region. So it's very easy to see now um, with the highlights. All right, so um, <clears throat> you can also tidy data. So this is the next section. So here I have some data on plane crashes, so historical plane crashes. The first thing you'll notice is that the raw data has a bunch of question marks. So those are read in as strings. So pandas, uh, this read CSV function is quite powerful. There is a, a NA values parameter where we can set a, you know, one of the values to be the uh, missing value. So here we can see that now these question marks have turned into this NAN object, which just stands for not a number. So uh, this is a cool thing in pandas. You have a choice to, uh, to do this. And, uh, and there's many other powerful things in read CSV, but I wanted to show that one. Now, if we take a look at uh, moving on to the next section, this abort column, there's lots of data in this one column. And it looks like, you know, this should probably be represented as three columns. You know, the, probably the total number aboard, the number of passengers, and the number of crew. So let's take a look at this column. So we can see here, yeah, it looks like there's three pieces of data, total uh, passengers and crew. So pandas allows you to extract out, like rip out uh, data with contained within uh, data. And, uh, and, and we use uh, something called a regular expression here. So uh, this is what this does. I'm not going to explain this regular expression, but it simply goes through one by one and rips out um, all the numbers that it can find. So it is uh, correctly taken out the two, one, and one um, from that first row. Uh, you can see this fourth or this row with uh, this very last row, I should, I'll just say, um, it only has one number, so the other two are actually missing. Uh, so there's nothing we can do about that. But pandas has the ability to extract um, information uh, within other, um, uh, within columns. So that's a, a very cool thing to do. Another thing it does is reshape data. So here we have some data on the uh, average arrival delay of airplanes, or airlines, excuse me, based on the airport. So this first column is airlines. Uh, the rest of these column names are airports. And then the numerical data is the delay. So um, we can see that actually all of these uh, numbers in here uh, represent the same thing. So it might be better to represent this in a um, in one uh, with one column. So we can put all of these values, all the numerical values, I should say, in one column. And to do this, um, there's a method called melt. And what melt does is basically just stacks um, a bunch of columns on top of each other. So I'll, I printed out the first 26 rows here just to show you that since there's a actually I should have done uh, I guess there's 14 should be 28 but uh, you'll get the point here so as you can see here uh, this Atlanta uh, airport ATL airport has all these values but then we just stack the DN airport right underneath it and it keeps going and going I just printed out the first 26 so um, uh, there, it, they all the, basically the data frame just gets completely reshaped where all the columns are basically stacked into a single column. So that's uh, important when you want to tidy data. That is the melt method. Pandas also offers the ability to join multiple tables together and also to read from SQL databases. So um, it relies on SQL Alchemy to make the connection for you. So this is a database that has a bunch of machine learning papers. And there's three tables in it. So uh, pandas, here we go, I read in the data. Um, I make the database connection, read in this data. So here's an author's table, and this is called the paper author's table. So 
um, in this instance, I want to show how we can join two things together, two tables together. So in this paper authors, you see this author ID. So the author name is over here. So if we wanted to sort of append the author's name to this paper author table, we would need to join on author ID over here with ID in this table over here. So that's what this uh, merge command does. And I know that's confusing to see the word merge instead of join. Um, but more merge is how you do SQL style joins in pandas. So we're joining this uh, PA table with the authors table. And uh, we're doing a left join. That's what this is. And uh, on the left table, which is this PA since it's on the left side, we're joining on the author ID. On the right side, we're joining an ID. And then we can see that, uh, so here's the, the original table ID, paper ID, author ID. And then we have the name of the author from the author table. So that's how you do uh, SQL style joins. Um, it's worth the merge method. All right, moving on. Uh, Pandas has good time series functionality. So I'm going to grab some uh, uh, stock data, the, uh, uh, five, the last five years of Apple price. So this is actually getting this in real time. So, um, uh, yeah, so, so this is a, an API called IEX trading. It's very good. And it uh, allows us to get the, um, you know, uh, one row per trading day for the last five years. So that's what this has done. Now, Pandas has something very cool to select um, ranges of dates. Uh, so here I'm selecting, uh, you can probably tell by the strings in here, uh, the months of February 2017 through March of 2017. So it's selecting both of those. So if I look here and I purposely printed out all the data, you can see that the first row is February 1st, 2017. And the last row is March 31st, uh, 2017. So it's a very nice way to select um, time periods, right? So two, uh, two months at a time here. All right, you can also group by time. So earlier we showed how you can group by unique values in a column, but you can also group by time. So here I'm going to group by uh, month. That's what this M stands for. So I'm going to group by month and find the average closing price of that month of data. So that's what this does. So group by month, take the closing price for every month and then return the mean. So that's all this is doing right here. So you can see Apple's price, uh, the average price during the month of March in 2014 was $70.11. All right, so last, uh, last piece, uh, last major piece that's showcased here is uh, visualization. So I'm actually gonna, the first example, I'm just gonna plot this as a line plot, um, this closing price over here. So I'm actually gonna use this data that I, that I just generated. Um, to plot a line plot, and here we can see the average. This is the average closing price of Apple, um, or average monthly closing price of Apple over the last five years. And Pandas is able to provide you know a nice access for us without us doing anything. So a little bit of code uh, goes a long way with Pandas typically. Um, back to the college race data. Uh, this is just uh, another example, a box plot. So this is just uh, plotting the distribution of races um, for every college. So, um, so what it does is it just goes one by one over the columns and creates a box plot for each column. That's pretty cool, very easily done. So all of the columns are plotted at once. And then I uh, just put this here just so you can see it. You can do a bar plot and um, the, a bar plot is another one that defaults to you know, going column by column and uh, plotting each bar like that. Pandas does use these values over here on the left hand side to uh, label the graph. So it does a bar plot like that. All right, so that concludes the examples that I wanted to show. And this gives you a very broad overview of Pandas. There's much, much, much more and uh, much more within each section that I showed. But these are the sort of the uh, major areas that uh, pandas will um, uh, help you uh, work with when you're doing a data analysis. Um, so there's, uh, like I said, a lot more 
And uh, those, all those areas will be covered in great detail uh, coming up. And one other thing, if you um, are uh, interested, I am selling uh, a book called Master Data Analysis with Python, it's, uh, Volume 1. It is 600 pages, has 300 exercises, uh, multiple projects, and detailed solutions. So um, if you are enjoying this material and want to learn more, please consider uh, purchasing the book.